live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering IBM Think 2018. Brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to theCUBE. We are live at day one of IBM Think 2018. I'm Lisa Martin with Dave Vellante. We're at Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas. 40 plus thousand people at this event. We're excited to welcome to theCUBE Ashok Brady, the group GM of DevOps at CA. Welcome to theCUBE. Great to be here. So you were at IBM, uh, you're now at CA. You came over a couple of years ago. Digital business transformation, a buzzword, we talk about it a lot on theCUBE. I want to kind of kick things off with you about what is CA seeing with respect to helping businesses evolve to a digital enterprise? What is a digital enterprise and where does trust come into that as, an, as a key enabler? Yeah, no, I think uh, you know, when you look at the enterprise, all businesses today are becoming technology-based businesses. So uh, it doesn't matter what industry you are in, uh, whether you're financial services, government, retail. So every industry is, innovation is coming from technology and software. So in that context, if somebody, if I'm a bank today and people used to walk into my, you know, use ATM or they will come into my store, but you may deal with a few hundred or a few million people, but now when you become a digital enterprise, you're scaling from a few hundred or a few million to almost a billion people or more who could be accessing your services over the web, over the mobile, as well as now AI as a channel. So how do you actually work scale the business from just dealing with people who you had prior relationships with to people who have to deal with now billions of people could be devices and bots in a very digital world where you don't have prior trust and relations established. So that's where I think about digital enterprise as who is moving from a traditional way of doing business to now you're scaling to five to six billion people, devices and everything else. But then the trust comes in because how do you trust whether a user is actually a real user, or if I'm a user, how do I trust an enterprise because I'm dealing with them virtually? And so this really it becomes a two-way thing, and so it's really the trust becomes much more important. I, I want to come back to trust in a minute, but this, this whole notion of, of digital, everybody talks about digital transformation, different things to different people, everybody uses the Uberization example, but everybody's trying to get digital right. All the customers that we talk to, uh, the companies that are organizing around it, do you see that in, in the marketplace? And what is your advice to customers who are trying to get it right? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a great question. I think the part of the being digital is really about, are you, sometimes people, what I call a digital washing things, you know, you basically adopt a few things. But in a true sense of digital, it's all about how do I actually understand the user needs and experimentation, it starts with really, you have a hypothesis and how do I actually go about acquiring new customers, and not just a few, but where you are trying to acquire millions of them. And in a digital world, you are establishing things where we call, you know, people talk about the different channels, right? Digital sales and others. Most of the enterprises typically have been dealing with direct relationship. So if I want to now create awareness of my services or products as a company, it's not about direct sales anymore. People are using different means to understand about the products and services themselves. So it becomes more about in that context, your sales will have to change in the first place. Your marketing has to be about, you know, how do I acquire digital in a channel perspective. So you have to change your processes such that feedback becomes much more important. It's not about just selling, People actually use your product and now you're getting feedback and that needs to be very much uh, much faster than what it used to be because it's all about experience mm -hmm. and people are going to change, you know, if you don't uh, get a response on your mobile app for a few seconds, they're going to switch. It's not that way in a traditional way, right? So the type of things what people do in a digital is quite different than in a traditional way. I, I want to follow that up with an observation and, and get CA's point of view or maybe even your personal point of view. When you think about mobile, social, cloud, SaaS, big data, these aren't really discrete industries anymore. They're sort of all come together. And it seems like digital is about these, these sets of digital services that are built on top of all those things. I mean, when you think about even 
OAuthing it, logging in with LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook. I mean, those are digital services that we can all, all access, and it seems like disruption is coming from companies who are able to form new businesses leveraging those digital services that are a part of this new fabric that's, that's emerging. So is that a reasonable premise, and, and where does CA fit in that fabric? Yeah, no, I think that's, uh, you know, basically what has happened, right, if I look at more from an uh, applications perspective, mm -hmm. we have gone from traditional client server, desktop applications to web, to mobile, but now the latest thing is AI, right? It's more like AI first applications. So when I look at a process perspective, the disruptions you're talking about is people used to do waterfall and then it was fast waterfall, yeah. then agile came in and people were saying, okay, let me develop, the development became agile but you need to bring the rest of the organization and that's where DevOps came in. But now you're looking at, if I am uh, looking at an application and I want to build an application and get feedback, people who build cloud first models, that's what it worked, like whether it's an Amazon or LinkedIn examples you're giving. But now if the application itself is changing, right? I look at it as like a thermostat, a digital thermostat versus a nest. When I develop and deploy something quickly, it was still predefined. It's a deterministic application, but now with the AI type application where everybody is going towards, the application itself starts changing. It starts learning and now it starts going to make decisions. So how do you actually develop and deploy, test something which you don't know what it's going to do based on the data? And that's really the next paradigm, right? Because the cloud itself is making everybody equal because if everybody uses SaaS applications on the cloud, so what's the differentiation for a company? So that's where I think we look at it as, you really still need to understand your customers, your domain, and being able to understand and learn from them, and the specific algorithms or whatever you apply, you train that, and how, what action you're going to take, is where, where we think CA, when we say transform, it's not just about transforming, how do you do development, and how do you do infrastructure and moving cloud, but just because you become a cloud, everybody can go to cloud and uh, infrastructure, people are providing AWS and Azure and IBM Cloud, then what happens to the companies, right? To me, that's where the transformation is the secret sauce of what industry you're in, how you understand your customers, and what you're going to do with it. Okay, so I would agree, cloud, let's call it, let's say cloud is table stakes, right? I mean, it's there, sets of services that anybody can use. Then there's data, that's a little harder. Uh, Making, putting data at the core of your enterprise is non-trivial. Uh, and then applying machine intelligence or AI to that data to learn, to improve, and to, to have a culture of speed and DevOps, that, that's the hard part. So that's where CA fits, is that right? Yeah, no, I Maybe think so, I, no, exactly, right? So from a data perspective, part of it comes from, you know, when you are collecting all this information from different companies and people, Privacy becomes a big issue, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you make sure that the data somebody gives you is private and you're not sharing with somebody else and people are sharing personal information, even including the IP addresses, where you're located. If you think about all of us, there's so much information about us available. But how do you make sure that that's private? And it's almost like I use an you know, example of somebody gives you a credit card information on the digital world, it's almost like you, are going, it's like somebody giving you a wallet and you're cooking, looking at the entire wallet just because they give you a credit card, right? <laughs> so we need to make sure that we actually are focusing on the privacy. So we actually help customers around making sure that data, what's private, and whether it's data in rest or in data in motion. And there's lots of laws like GDPR and others where in Europe, for example, right, you can't have the data leave a particular country or a data center. So how do you make sure that happens? And the second part is, in machine learning, there's so much bias in the data. The machine learning is nothing but computational statistics, and it's going to come up with a signal based on the data you provide. What if there is data is biased? There's a lot of bias in the data, and now, how do you know whether you can prevent the, you know, the bias in the data? Uh, and then, you know, we have a lot of other things, but it's about the speed and agility, but also how do I test things? and make sure that you know, the data itself is one aspect, but the services are available to you 24 by seven, anytime, anywhere. Mm. With respect to some of the announcements that have come out already from IBM, related to cloud, uh, related to AI, you mentioned security, what excites you in your role as the group GM for DevOps in terms of the directions that they're going in, especially where AI is concerned? No, I, I think you know IBM. You know, when I look at all the way from when they first announced uh, the Jeopardy and the Watson, 
I think there has been uh, so much of uh, innovations and a lot of, uh, you know, of course there has been a lot of hype also, but I think now you're getting to a point where there is significant progress in both machine learning as well as applying deep learning and some of the things around solving real world problems like healthcare, right? You're trying to solve, people talk about AI, well it's going to take away jobs, but I think it's not taking away jobs, it's the tasks of people what do, but most people have a lot of tasks, mundane tasks, but if you are able to solve the world's biggest problems of healthcare related, you're finding free people, you know, people who are disabilities, and a lot of things around, uh, if you look at the automation, which is creating really new opportunities for many people to focus on the higher value things. So I think the IBM has brought together an industry focus, which is great. It's not just about technology, but let me go and look at healthcare industry. The supply chain with blockchain, right? I think the com combination of blockchain with AI and machine learning, it's also changing the, every, the whole aspects of what we knew. The trust comes back into this, because uh, you know, IBM is announcing with Hyperledger uh, something around zero knowledge uh, proof, which is really around, if you are somebody who is, let's say you're under 21, you look like you're somebody who's under 21, <laughs> and okay. if somebody <laughs> has to check your proof of age on a, somebody not knowing you on the web or on the digital world, how do they verify that? With, without you giving too much information. So that's something where it's like zero knowledge proof. So that's being built into the blockchain. So things like that, com com combining blockchain and uh, now with the mainframe, with the, there is a Z14 which has the uh, highest levels of encryption. So you can really start providing a true system of trust and a digital trust for, for both from a user's perspective as well as enterprises. Yeah, the whole KYC know your customer is just exploding in terms of of interest and, and importance, and you guys are obviously, sounds like you're participating there directly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, we are launching a bunch of this mainframe as a service for that to help customers, because we also have problems with people retiring on the mainframe and they don't understand. So what we're doing is to bring a notion of, how do I use the tools I already know, like open source tools or whatever. So we have an initiative called Brightside, which is really help developers use the things that they already know, but underneath the covers, they're actually building things for the mainframe. So that solves the problem of knowing the mainframe but don't make mainframe different. Right. So on kind of closing things out, from an innovation perspective, one of the things that you talked about with, with automation, and we heard this earlier, Dave, from KPMG, is that um, machine learning and AI are actually going to be enablers of a lot of things, including new opportunities, new career paths, et cetera, rather than looking at it as, oh, that's going to take away humans for jobs, so that, that was interesting that you brought that up. But talk to us about the innovation, the culture of innovation at CA. How is the culture enabling you to do your job better and really work with customers in a symbiotic way to really understand what problems need to be solved? What's that innovation culture like? Yeah, I mean, I think that's actually, you know, we actually have, a, we've created a more like an incubation program, a startup within CA. One of the things we have done is, anybody has a really good idea to solve a customer outcome, we kind of go through this whole like a minimal viable process and they actually come in and uh, pitch the idea. Then we actually fund those as a separate startups within the company. We have uh, more than 15 startups, some of them have graduated, either they, we buy them inter internally from a different business units or we can even uh, take them public to other companies, right? So we have done that, which has energized a lot of the people, like they can become the over founders and they can bring the innovations. But within the, even the product development teams, we do a lot of hackathons and being able to uh, use AI and machine learning and blockchain. We have basically built a machine learning first culture. So everybody from people who have been there for 30 years to people who have just come in are all learned this and they're looking at what are the type of things I can apply AI for my data to improve how I can look at patterns and improve the you know, automation, but there is also, as applications become AI first, how can we kind of help customers around that? So I think it's an exciting time for everybody and uh, we are seeing that already in terms of the number of innovations and patterns we're finding also. Well Ashok, thanks so much for sharing your insights and what's going on with IBM and CA. We thank you so much for your time. Oh great, thank you for having me on. We want to thank you for watching theCUBE. We are live at day one of IBM's inaugural Think event. I'm Lisa Martin with Dave Vellante. Stick around, Dave and I are going to be right back with our final guests and then we'll do a wrap of the exciting things that we've heard today. We'll be right back. Thank you.